and we're back on another episode of We Making It Woo! And today, guys, I am so fortunate and honored and glad and uh, downtrodden by the work that has been been be- brewing to get this happening. But two special guests, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Natty Trogdon. And I'm Hollis Bartlett. Hey, Natty and Hollis is in the building. Okay, so before we get started, you already know how this goes. If you want to be a part of the conversation, be sure to email me at katysmiles.nyc at gmail.com. That's Katie because Katie's my name. Smiles because, y'all, let's just be real. My smile is very (laughs) cute. And NYC because that's where we at. Let's, oh my gosh. Usually... Guys, I usually say what I'm reading, which I'm going to tell you now. I'm still Mm. working through In the Company of Women. If you don't have that book, like I said, it is like a coffee table book. So, like, that ain't the book you want to take on your New York commute. Um, Because, it's y'all, it's like a textbook. It's heavy as hell. You build up those biceps. No, you're going to build up a back bill because your back is going to fall (laughs) off. But it's so it's such a good book. Um, I read it every morning to like start the day to just kind of feel inspired. Um, and I'm still working my way through uh, Homie Don't Play That by David Peisner. David, if you listen to this podcast, shout out to you. But also, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Uh, it's the story of how In Living Color came to be. Ooh. It's a really, mm. really, really great book. But let me tell y'all about last night. So for those of you who don't know, yes, I sing. And so um, this year I've been trying to like uh, devote more time to that practice so that it can grow. And I thought like, oh my gosh, why don't I go see one of my favorite singers in concert? They was, it was at the Brooklyn Bowl. Shout out to Brooklyn Bowl. It was okay. cute last night. But let me tell y'all, Jamison and Daly, y'all, they cut up. And I was cutting up with them. <laughs> I will post the videos because Emily, everybody knows Emily, my girlfriend. Emily recorded me. Y'all, I was living my best life. I was shouting. <laughs> I don't know if you're supposed to go to the concert and listen to the person. Because when I go to the concert, I think I'm supposed to sing with them all <laughs> of the songs, every note, and every experience that they have on stage. I feel like I'm supposed to have with them as I belt. I think that's valid. I think that's yeah. what you're supposed to do at concerts. Y'all, if you ain't supposed to do it, I'm breaking all the rules, <laughs> and it don't even matter. Marsha and Burgess, shout out to you. You're going to be here on February 22nd. And, honey, when I tell you I'm trying to be up in that space, <laughs> front row and center, because I seen you at, what, the Beacon? Of, what is that, off 72nd with Maxwell? Almost died there, too. <laughs> y'all. I don't usually make such long intros, but let me tell y'all, last night, it was just, I just almost died. Because I didn't even tell y'all, I met him by the door. Y'all, I literally almost peed my pants. Like, I was <laughs> like trying. Like, walk in and, and he's there. Literally. Well, no, because he was like, oh, I'm going to be at the thing if you want me to, like, sign something oh. or whatever, whatever. Y'all, he was so nice. And it was so magical because I've been Good. following this singer since I was like 18 or 17. Wow. So it just, yeah. You need a moment. Mm. You need it a moment. was just, that's what I'm telling you all about it. So I, it. I don't know what you're supposed to take from that. Live your best life. Live your best life. And if you go to a concert, belt. <laughs> So that they yeah. hear you. Try and sing over the singer. Hell the yeah. Give them the lyrics just in case they forget. <laughs> Help them. I pay for this ticket. I'm in service of you, honey. <laughs> Let's make it work. Okay, guys. So, back to our regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, and I think Natty and Hollis know, but I'm going to give them the scoop. So, we are launching our way into February, um, despite much cold weather. Oh and gosh. I thought it would be a great idea to use February because it's Valentine's Day is coming as a opportunity to create conversation about how intimate relationships um, serve our creative practice. Uh, mm. I think not only growing up, but also as I get deeper into the artistic community, mm-hmm. I do think there's this uh, rhetoric around by myself. Mm-hmm. All day, mm-hmm. you know, sitting in a corner, you know, <laughs> dancing and then posting it on Instagram and yeah. then being by yourself. <laughs> and um, not to say that I think that there's anything wrong with that, 
But because I am in a relationship, because I even if I wasn't in a relationship, I would aspire to maybe be in a relationship at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it would be a great opportunity to learn from people that are doing it every day. Uh, so this month will be a variety of relationships that are all intimate um, with people who are making it <laughs> together. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, Hollis and Nadi, what are you making? What are we making, Hollis? <laughs> oh, what? Um, we've been working on this uh, particular duet mm-hmm. um, for almost a year at this point, yeah. right? We started in like mm, it's been mm, beginning of 2018, like like April ish. I think it was like March? February, March, one of okay. those. One yeah. of those, so one, we'll, of those we'll, one of those months that it's cold and. Yeah, Whatever. but kind of beginning of 2018, so about a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the duet is entitled Transmuting, and we will be performing it in its most um, full form, March 1st and 2nd, at Give Me Dance as part of Workup. Mm-hmm. Um, Congratulations on that. I know that that is a you. grueling application thank process. <laughs> We're very excited about that and, opportunity. And super humbled because... Yeah, it's it's incredible. And we also have a great, I just want to side note, mention that we've got a great cohort of other artists that are also performing in workup, both in our weekend and in the two following weekends. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm hoping to get a couple of those people yeah. on, if not yeah. before their weekend, definitely after their weekend, because a lot of those people are my peers. Yeah. yeah. And um, y'all already know, I'll be up in the gibs yeah, most days. So I'm doing great work at Gibney, yeah. Tell me a little bit about tell me a little bit about how both of you maybe individually arrived to this idea and then tell me about how you decided if there was some kind of like separation moment tell me how you decided to do it together cuz mm. that's definitely not like the the obvious choice. Yeah. Or maybe it was. I don't know. Well, we had made work together previously. Um mm-hmm. I think it's sort of I think there's something that really naturally happens when you're a couple in the arts that right. that you want to make work and you maybe don't have the resources, time, money, et cetera, right. to do that. So you're like, I want to dance and make with other people. Oh, look, here's the person that lives in the same apartment with me. We can use our living room. You know, <laughs> there's something about like it's it's easy to reach out or like, oh, I want to try these ideas on this person that I'm around most of the time. So I feel like that's sort of how we came to making. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Holly? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like our first like dabbles into work was um, aw- awful. <laughs> Why was it well, awful? I would like to <laughs> frame it in the way that like with bad. any collaboration, there is, it like takes time to get into the groove of it. You know, so like, we're figuring out how we work together and mm-hmm. kind of what Maddie's wants are and what my wants are and end up find the middle ground. So okay. yeah, there was like a couple pieces that <laughs> were about figuring that out. I also out. think it's really important now as as a as a maker in this point in my life that I'm like, you got you have to make bad work. Like, to understand how to make work, you have to make really terrible work and then be like, that was bad. Here yeah, are you the reasons that, that it's bad. <laughs> but now I know how to sort of keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. So our first few pieces were just, they had to happen. Um, and then we took a little time away because we were busy with other things. And then how, how did this, how did we even come I think it, my memory is like transmuting start started very casually. Like yeah. we got some space and I think you were really excited about this idea. Right. It's, it, yeah, it started off with this idea of that I'm sort of obsessed with, which is um, we, we coined it as rigorous patterning. Mm-hmm. Um, just sort of like continuing to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again until you can't do it anymore yeah 
Um, so those were ideas that I wanted to play with and was like, hey, mm-hmm. Hollis, come with me. Mm-hmm. I feel like actually that's how a lot of our ideas for works starts. It's um, like indicative of our personalities that I'm like, Hollis, I had this crazy dream about this piece and this is what it's going to be like and these are all the things that we do with it and here's the lighting and the costumes and the, the trajectory of it and this is what's going to happen. And he's like, good morning. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, pause. Eh, right, p- exactly. He's like, that's so. Write wonderful. it down. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, Let's I'll talk about note. it and, yeah. uh, and tonight. He's like, he's like, our, like, you know, like, spotlights and like 600 costume changes necessary for this <laughs> work that we haven't even created yet that you dreamt about of course they are uh, they're yeah. so Absolutely. necessary but so, then but then also like in that so like she throws that huge pot of ideas at me and then like oh yeah but like this idea also interacts with those and so like we kind of it's a building process of i kind of pull in some other ideas and then we kind of figure out how what Natty's put in and what I've put in kind of blends together and let it kind of grow from there. So before I'm going to go backwards a bit to go oh, yeah. forwards mm-hmm. just a bit. So how did you guys meet? Oh, because obviously you guys like, <laughs> yes, I'm here for the work, but I'm also here for the mush. So let's not get it twisted. <laughs> How'd you meet? Oh, we always draw at- straws to see who's going to tell the story. <laughs> so good at the story. <laughs> Take it away, Hollis. Okay. Um, well, we definitely met through dance. And I was taking a summer workshop and uh, met some people from SUNY Purchase. Which sorry, which summer workshop? Because I know you oh, know dance is listening we're to this. Getting, we're getting into it. <laughs> so I, was, I was a young student at the Doug Vernon Dancers Summer Workshop at, in Akron, Ohio. We were there that summer. And then... Uh, the following year, I joined Doug Vernon Dancers and was teaching in the workshop. And some of my friends who I had met from Purchase came to that workshop right. and brought their friend Natty Trogdon. Okay, okay. I kind of met her through mutual friends. Um, and then, like, through the next year, Natty and I stayed in touch. And we were, like, texting. Okay, so and... did y'all, like, stay in touch because you thought she was cute? Yeah. Boy, did you stay in touch because you thought she was like a lovely dancer? Come on now, give me the scoop. Like all, all the above, you know, like <laughs> Maddie plays really hard to get. And okay. she uh Yeah, she just got this like aura around her that okay, really, like, aura. drew me in. Okay. I mean, but so, I would say the same for you. There was like there was something about Hollis. Um one of one of my friends from Purchase had gone to the workshop with him and sort of introduced us and there's there's something about Hollis which if you first meet him you're like oh look another white straight male dancer just what we need in the dance field I don't know a lot of y'all at Hollis I mean they either white but they're not always straight or they straight <laughs> but they're not always is, white so true. I mean honey I think you um, I think you're a commodity <laughs> and and he has this sort of confidence that's can also come across as like arrogance a little okay. bit in in the way that he holds himself and so that's sort of the first thing that I saw and then I was like oh but he's actually really kind and yeah. nice and super talented and yeah. I think for me I couldn't figure him out which was really intriguing Uh-oh. I yeah, know that's I, it that's go. it I was like I don't understand you I want to know more <laughs> um so when you guys Okay, so when there was an obvious intrigue, yeah, but the, you weren't thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna make with this person. You were just thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna make out with this person. <laughs> it always starts that way. I mean, it always starts that way. <laughs> it, exactly. You're like, we gotta make out and have a summer romance, um, <laughs> and and that didn't happen. And we stayed friends for about a year, and then yeah, well, there was a lot of like other stuff in the way like Natty was still in school and uh, had a I was partner trying to time. figure out my life as a dancer in New York and yeah. so like timing wasn't quite right but we kept communicating yeah and I think that's always a good sign like both of us were willing to put in the effort to like stay in touch yeah um 
and so then yeah kind of like built our friendship and we always joke like one of our first dates we like got drunk and sat outside of a dog park Hell and we're like yeah. oh my god i love that dog and i want I that dog. dog and like, I love dogs. And like our, our shared love of dogs has like been a long bedrock of our relationship and even to this day like we house sit dogs and I don't know like there's certain things that like got planted in our friendship kind of early on in that time that built the relationship that we have today yeah, yeah. and and much of our relationship is sort of seeped in dance which is right. which is great and also like not great at times it, yeah. it has its it's both but um yeah and we started dating a little while after that and it was like sort of instant I think I tried to move in with you like a month after we started dating I was like so rent in New York is really expensive um how do you feel about me just living with you (laughs) I was like we're we're good we're getting married now right um (laughs) seriously and it's been as of June 2019 this year it'll be seven years that we've yeah. been together. okay yeah. you've said a lot of things that i'm gonna now so we went back now i'm gonna push forward mm-hmm. just a mm-hmm. bit mm-hmm. what i do love about what you said when you were talking about your beginning making process you said that it took time to kind of negotiate space and also just kind of learn how mm-hmm. you worked mm-hmm. how how much does that learning aspect or how much did that learning aspect bleed into your relationship? Because I think about like a baby relationship too. A lot yeah. of the beginning is just figuring it out. And, and it sounds like it was the same way as like with the making process too. Can you speak totally, to that a bit? Totally. 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 Um, I think in particular with this process, we, with this, this duet that we've been working on, um, we we really sort of deepened into how we communicate as collaborators, but also mm-hmm. how we communicate in our own relationship. Yeah. Um, I think we're very much opposites in a lot of things, and so at times that can sort of create um, some conflict. Yeah, because opposition. It, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so for us, this was like an, an understanding, a deep a deepening into like, how we respect each other and how we listen to each other and um, how we can continue to, to grow, that it's not like a we can continue to research our work, but also research into each other and our relationship. Yeah, and that's beautiful. And I think that, I mean, with all relationships, with all collaborations, that just takes time to sort of understand this person in front of me who is a different being than me that I have certain um, tendencies that are really strong, but it may not be the same for them. Yeah, and maybe not even be helpful for and them. And may not, exactly. Like, me being like, no, we need to do it like this is not helpful for well, all of us. I, right, I feel like what we learned was how we help each other grow. Yeah. Like, because we are opposites, that, like, Natty would push me in a way that I wouldn't, have pushed myself right um and to see to see the growth or the blossoming into something new for me and then vice versa I'd be like come on Natty let's go in this direction and learning to trust each other and to follow the other person into that unknown territory uh, both as humans in our relationships but then also as creators in the art that we're making has really helped both of us grow in the process yeah and i think there's something you you said push and and that also made me think of challenge and i think mm-hmm. there's something really great about having someone who can challenge you and so sort close of, to you too so close to yeah. you and and make you sort of question things in a new light because if we're not challenged we don't grow and if we don't grow we stay stale and then like might as well die <laughs> you know i definitely don't want people to think they're dying <laughs> Jeez, i got really dark <laughs> but, but no, i do but you know what I mean. well yeah. well yeah. i think yes i know what you mean and i want to take it a step further i know a lot of people who um i wouldn't say i know a lot of people that would necessarily steer clear of relationships but i know a lot of people who are like really particular i am actually yeah. very particular about i think what you spend your time with 
But mm-hmm. I do, uh, as I get a little older, I can kind of see where I back off of a challenge because I'm like, you're not understanding me. Totally. And this is your fault that right. you're not understanding yes. me. Yes. And so where am I leaving? <laughs> there. Like, bye. I, bye. Yeah. bye. Like, Wait. so quickly. <laughs> um, and, j- and just, like, the, which is, like, making me think, too, about, like, then what does it mean to be vulnerable? What is the strength in being vulnerable? Also, too, what is the strength in being uncomfortable? All yeah. these things mm-hmm. that we are, mm-hmm. like, pushed yeah. to do in a dance class or in yeah. a rehearsal process, but somehow, um, just in my experience, has kind of been lost when it comes to our personal lives. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that, that you guys have found a way to bleed them through sounds really, um, obviously, challenging, but also uh, worth the challenge. Yeah. Which leads me to this next segue, which I feel like is like <laughs> all dancers are like, I'm not dating another dancer because oh blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 blah. I just want to like preface this conversation with my ex was like, if you ever break up with me, you're probably leaving me for a dancer. <laughs> and I just remember being like, why do you when when he first said that, I was like, why do you think like that? And he was like, those are your people. Like, mm. those yeah. are your people. Yeah. The problems that I think I was always, like, maybe coming up against. I guess he felt like it was just because he wasn't a dancer. And he felt like b- dating a dancer would just get rid of a lot of those problems. Which I agree with. Sure. <laughs> just being honest. But I'm curious because you did <laughs> mention this. What is the big deal about dating another dancer? Hell, if you going to the show, they going to the show. You know, like... <laughs> They like you like somebody, maybe they don't like that somebody, but y'all can have a really clear argument about why this person isn't good. Mm-hmm. What like what is what is that? I want to dispel some myths. What is this mm-hmm. about? Tell me more. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, we also, you know, we date dancers, so I don't know if we can necessarily dispel <laughs> the myth of why people don't want to date dancers. Uh, I, so, uh, okay, let's start with why we do date dancers. Maybe that yeah. will help. So I feel like the most obvious is that there's an understanding of what you do every day. That yeah. the sort yeah. of like hustle that you have to do, that you are not working a typical nine to five, or maybe you are, but, uh, it's but on like top of, on top of right. performing, making, teaching, whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever. Right. That your body is physically exhausted. That like you're mentally you're exhausted. You're mentally exhausted. Like especially if you live in any sort of big city, you have all of those pressures on top of you. Yeah. So coming home to someone and being like, "Babe, I'm exhausted," and they're like, "Me too," is great. And there's yeah. there's a real understanding. Almost like a camaraderie that you yeah. feel like you're fighting yeah. a fight together. Yeah. That's well, a lot. And I also want to echo what Katie you kind of set up in posing this question was also that. Like there is information in our bodies from our training and just to like not have to talk to anyone about that or just to like come home and like the way that we touch or cuddle or are intimate together is informed by this shared practice that we have in dance. Like we as dancers train and we have very sensitive understandings of our own bodies. And to be with someone else who also like has researched and understand. And so there's like a nonverbal understanding within our relationship as well, because we are, you know, trained dancers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the hesitation maybe with dating a dancer in, and I'm going to, I'm going to say this in particular to New York city, because I think that it might be different elsewhere and I can't speak on that, but that, there is competition and do you want to have competition with someone who you are intimate with do you want to face those challenges of um you got something and i didn't or like the sort of like you have these opportunities that i want and and i think that can be really hard and i think it can also bleed into your relationship in a way that makes it unhealthy yeah so yeah. so I don't know if that's the reason why people because it could be in any field too. I think, yeah, I think yeah, being in yeah. the same field there's a great understanding and sensitivity, but there's also the like there's a little bit more sensitivity because you of yeah. the understanding. Yeah. yeah, there's always the question of like, well what if? What if we're up for the same thing? Yeah. 
and you get it and I don't and it's something that I really wanted or maybe you really wanted like how do I navigate yeah caring about you and your feelings in this time of disappointment but also you supporting me in my like greatness I don't know yeah well that that um I want to make sure I've said this as clearly as I can that also just makes me think about what does self-care look like in a relationship yeah because yes there's competition but also like um so for example i'm a heady person Mm -hmm. that's that's probably why i talk to people (laughs) 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 it gets me on my head but um my partners on average or the even not even my necessarily my partners even like my good friends people that i think i want to be close to are never as heady as i am Mm -hmm. And so when I think about what my self-care looks like, mm-hmm. a lot of times it's it's like two extremes. Yeah. I'm either like really, really heady, which means I'm a bit withdrawn right. from somebody that's close to me, or I'm like the life of the party on top of a table. Yeah. And yes, I'm here for on top of tables, y'all. Like, get with it. <laughs> and so um, just how do you and, – and I definitely want to use that as a segue because of something else that you said earlier. In those times – of self-care because a creative process is so um i think in some ways precious because like obviously Nadia, you were saying earlier like yo i was dreaming about this last (laughs) night you wasn't in my dream so you don't know what what is happening but i know yeah and all i need you to do is support me support me it was amazing yes it was and what you're saying doesn't sound as amazing as my dream What have you guys been able to do both for yourselves and for each other to kind of maintain a um a self sensibility but also a couple sensibility? Well, I I could jump in and say that it's so great being in a partnership. Um and I know that oftentimes for myself my tendency is to like, go, 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 go. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it hits me that I need to take care of myself. Yeah. And like having another person there, that's like, hey, Hollis, you need to like slow it down a bit or like, hey, why don't we take this night in and vice versa. I think Natty's actually in the same, the same tendency to just like, we're the opposite, we, but we're the same. <laughs> yeah, like in the same way that we just like schedule our lives to the hour but we don't remember to schedule off time. And so then I think just in the past couple months, maybe that we're, we've come to this acknowledgement. And so then I'll be like, Hey, Natty, we need to schedule this weekend where we don't have anything. Or like, this is time for us to spend time on us, on our relationship. Or, or this is time where like, I have a night off and then she gets a night off someplace else. Um, I think in this partnership, we're able to work together to remind each other to take care of Almost yourself. Like, like personal accountability partners. It's, it's personal yeah. accountability. And it's and I, I think it's also like understanding that if if he needs some time away, like if he needs to be like, I need to go in the bedroom and just like check out for a minute, that it's not it's not a reflection of me or anything that I did, but it's, but it's also like you, you need a minute and I'm going to give you that minute. Yeah. Um, I think another thing that's really important for us as makers and in this making partnership is that we also have makings outside of our work Mm. that like Mm -hmm. as much as we are making together, we're also making separately and we're teaching separately and we're dancing separately so that, we can we have these other things these uh, that we can explore outside of our own stuff together so it's yeah. so as much as we're like seeped in this process together we can also step out and be like i need to try some things on my own or yeah. i this this idea is not for us it's for me right and so i'm going to be a little selfish and say i'm i'm taking this nugget and going away and exploring that and then yeah. that also feels back into our partnership Right. Yeah, as both makers and and teachers and whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, self care is so important, and I think we should all be really selfish about our self care. And I think communication, communicating your needs, yeah. saying I need time, I love you, I'm, I'm gonna go binge on the Real Housewives for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Hi. <laughs> he hates me for that, but like, 
<laughs> well, that and, um, yeah, I just think that uh, that just made me think of so many things, but namely communication. Communication is um, so important. Mm-hmm. Everybody says that communication is important, but I just want to be the first person to say, let me let me speak to everybody out there. Let me tell you. <laughs> attention, attention. <laughs> Growing up in my house, what, no communication? Nope. <laughs> it was like, I said this. And you just made a face at the floor because if she saw you make that face and she, yes, she being my mom, like my stepdad was like, nah, like he don't really care. But yeah, there was no like, I am uncomfortable with your, there was no specificity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And I guess I say that to say, um, like, yes, shout out to Emily, who's like a godsend because she's very understanding because I am not the most. Mm. <laughs> my communicativeness <laughs> comes to pettiness. <laughs> I've grown really articulate <laughs> with being aggressive with my words. Petty, so you know petty. to back off. <laughs> it's not as sensible I, as like, I just need to take a moment because my brain feels like it's going to pop out of my eyes. Yes. It comes off something like, get away from me. Girl, I think Don't we, touch me. I think we have. I think we might be the same person because <laughs> that is me. <laughs> but I don't say that so that you can bond in misery with me. I say that to just keep everybody encouraged that oh, yeah. like communication is also a muscle. And um, yeah. maybe I feel like all the dancers that I know, I actually think that they're really great communicators about their work, about their creative process, be it uh, orally or audioly, like podcasting or whatever. Communicating, or writing, yeah, yeah, or in writing, communicating about what you're feeling without uh, fear of mm-hmm. being judged, mm-hmm. or uh, without fear of being too vulnerable with somebody. That's a yo, that's a practice too. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, I just encourage people like in this time with all of these interviews that if you do feel like you're like me and you just need some time to figure out your words <laughs> <laughs> without being crazy, take, <laughs> take that time, but also try to communicate to the person like, look, all the words that I'm coming up with are gonna piss you off because yeah. I'm pissed off. So if you could just give me like 20 minutes, I'm gonna come up with something really nice to say that's gonna be good well and i think it's this it's this idea of like if i have a slice of the pie that means that no pie is left for you like bec- if i yeah. tell you that i need something it doesn't negate your needs i'm, yeah. I'm communicating that this is what i need in this moment and it, it, there's something to like being really honest and just saying this is what i need that i think is really important mm-hmm. and we should all do that this is yeah. what i need yeah this and is what i need and the beauty of the partnership then is figuring out how we balance all those needs. Yeah. Safely and, and healthily. Safely. And once you communicate and you're like, this is what I need, then the other person can then you know, respond accordingly. It's like, oh, right. Of course. Like we don't, we, we joke all the time. Like I can't read your mind. So I can't know you that you need, have these you needs need until you tell me. You just need to try a little harder. You, you just can't need read to. My mind. You just we need to try. Point. I was going to say, you need to just try harder. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I think Emily just literally told me, I can't read your mind. Look at my face. You're like, I said it all with that look. Like, like, didn't, I didn't I say that? Didn't I just say, don't touch me? Like, so you I know that something's that. wrong. Like, right. And you know exactly what's wrong. <laughs> I know you know what's wrong. And you're trying me, but acting like you told it was. Yeah, let me look at you again. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> Let's try this again, shall we? But I'm going to use that as uh, not a perfect segue, but a segue to finding. Uh, so, yes, these. So preface, these interviews are a bit more different because these are two people. Yes. But I do want to also like weight the relationship part with the making part and try to like dabble mm-hmm. in a little bit of both so that everybody gets mm-hmm. a, as much as a 360 experiment or 360 perspective as you could. Mm-hmm. That said, thinking about support and what you need, how did you get what you needed to support this practice in terms of like residencies and space? How did you go about, how did you go about doing that? Yeah. Um, take it away, Hal. <laughs> well, I think we we looked at what we had yeah. and who we knew and um, like what we could build together. Um, and I, so we're, we're super fortunate to have some really great relationships with um, places like the Dance Complex yeah. in um, Cambridge, Massachusetts, who yeah. who's been a big supporter of us and. Mm-hmm. Um, to have places like like uh, 
Doug Stern Summer Workshop where we can we can try out work in front of an audience, get some feedback. And I would just say that like we're really fortunate to have built these relationships for this. So yeah. continue. And even just like shout out to like Waxworks, yeah. at Arts, and to Gibney. Gibney's also been a huge supporter of our work. Um, Pam Pietro. Pam Pietro. Shout out and to you. Pam. We love you, Pam. Love Pam. Yo, we got to tag her in this episode because like she needs to hear this. She's shout so out to Pam. Sorry, how about Pam? So, so much. Um, yeah, so we kind of like looked around at who we knew in the dance world and and kind of used those relationships to, you know, get a little bit of studio space here or get a showing here and there um, and just kind of let our work gradually grow in the spaces that we had. Wow. So it was kind of a very gradual process, but also it was like fitting into our schedule and their schedules. And But there's been kind of a nice gradual building kind of a momentum of our creative process and i think giving ourselves the time and space to research it as much as we could um when you say research it what are you referring to well just sort of like really deepen into it and not try and produce a product too fast right because i think you know as emerging makers and um anyone really that there's this sort of pressure to create something really great to then right. get the opportunities to be able to research and take the time it's like oh I need to show them that I can make really good so that I can get a grant to get the space to then right. have time to sort of yeah. deepen into something and I think which is really unrealistic when you think I, about it really unsustainable yeah. right right so I think we gave ourselves the permission to not have the pressure to make something grandiose just to be like this is the research that we're interested in. This yeah. is something that we found that is probably going to be the next like 10 years of our making sort of thing that we're going to deepen into more and more and more. Yeah. And so let's let's do that. And then also like let's apply for a, an, anything and everything. Like anything and everything where we can show, anything and everything where we can get subsidized space. Like let's just let's see what happens. And yeah. You apply for everything and you get two things. Yeah. And then and then maybe something happens from those two things that gets you another thing. Yeah. Um, I will also say, like, don't be afraid to use your resources. Like, for uh, for the most part, people are going to want to support you. And sometimes yeah. you just have to ask. And that's yeah. so scary. Yeah. Talk about, like, like, the same thing that you were saying earlier about, like, being with your partner. And you're like, I just really need to watch Real Housewives for three hours. <laughs> That's so scary yeah. because you're like, you don't want that person to feel like, you don't want that person to feel like, I don't want to be with you right now or I don't want, like, you don't want that person to feel neglected. Right. And it's the same way with um, asking. You yeah. don't want that person to feel used. You don't used want for that or person to, judge to you. Yeah, yeah, like, like what have you not been doing so exactly. that you feel like you need that? Yeah. Exactly. But, again, no one can read your mind. Yeah. So you have to ask. Right. Exactly. And the worst case is that someone says like no, and it's probably not actually a no. It's probably a not now. Or right. Like, right. I I do want to support you. I mean, you know, if you think about, we've dedicated X amount of our lives to this field, so we know right. hundreds of people who have seen you along your journey. Yeah. And like, we, people want to support. Right. <laughs> and I will say that like Hollis is like number one. Like he. He knows so many people and has really helped us out with, like, connecting to things and, and being able to, like, use this one opportunity to sort of Foster. spin something off. Yeah. yeah, to have something for us, which has been really great. Well, but, like, don't short sell yourself either. Yeah. Like, we both <laughs> we both have connections. And, you know, Natty, I was just thinking about that slice and dice that we did with the lovelies. Uh the best y'all was, so like, was this with 92nd street around was this with 92nd street y no this was at the joffrey, the joffrey school oh. okay um. the the lovelies you know like we were looking around at who else is in our community yeah and the lovelies do this great program called slice and dice and um natty kind of was in contact with them and um we ended up doing an evening where we got to share kind of early ideas of transmuting and Brendan Drake also shared some work and the lovelies also performed. It was this great um, 
evening of kind of being with our peers yeah and yeah. sharing work yeah i mean it's 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 a hustle <laughs> it's like it's a hustle to to get opportunities and your first rejection is really hard when you're like yeah. but, but i spent three hours on this application yeah. but i think that there's something really special about asking people for what you need yeah, yeah. and also just and knowing that you're not in it alone yeah 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 and also just knowing that the practice of asking you'll probably get better at asking absolutely um yeah i just i don't know and i think people i think people know when you're being i mean people can read the bullshit or like you're if you're like mm, okay um can i use you for this you know people <coughs> understand that versus yeah. like I'm, i would really love to use this space or we're researching this you know would be happy to do whatever like teach a class in exchange or yeah. whatever you might need for this but if we could use this sort of thing like mm -hmm. people understand when you're being genuine and want to support genuine yeah and i just think about just like timing and i don't know when i set out to do this whole power couple series <laughs> oh God, i just power thought couple. yes that's what i call them because you guys are hella powerful y'all oh. let me let me like take a minute because we almost time to wrap up but y'all let me tell you relationships are work yo i be over here trying to work on myself and then i look at the, my left and it's somebody sitting next to me that's all, mm -hmm. also asking me for work yeah and um, I'm just super over this whole like Will and Jada, Ellen and Portia. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let me let me let me explain a bit. I'm here for the Will and Jadas. I'm here for the Ellen and Portia, Swiss Beats, mm -hmm. Alicia Keys. I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, those examples, at least for me, can feel very far. Yeah, like yeah. I can pick and also, I'm gonna just keep going. But like also. I can pick up and I can, I can go on YouTube right now and look up so many interviews about couples in other fields who are literally doing the same thing that we're doing. Mm -hmm. More so, I'm with dancers every day that are my peers, etc., who I can't Google right. or look up. And they're literally, they literally, you guys literally have the answers to the things that I'm already trying to figure out. So, of course you're powerful. Of course we need to hear your voices. Hell, we need to be inspired. We need to know the good fight is being fought by somebody that's right down the street. Mm. Praise. Well, thank you for putting this together. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's Amazing. just, I just think it's super necessary because I think mm. oftentimes when I think about the concept of making it, a lot of my examples are just really far from me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, be it age, be it resources, uh, be mm -hmm. it fields, whatever the case may be. And like, how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to remain encouraged when I think that the thing that I want is so far from me? Mm -hmm. So why don't I just bring it a little closer to me? Yeah. By I, shooting some emails. If I shooting some emails. I think, it, you know, it's the same for us too, that there are, there are makers and artists that we really look up to as well that feel far away and then some that feel a little closer and um as much as you're like we're making it we're like we we start we're trying <laughs> we yeah. Yeah. okay <laughs> but you know it's just sort of it's like um perspective of like yeah. you're like oh my god i'm not doing this and someone's like you're doing so much and you're yeah. like oh and i'm sure yeah. that like yeah i'm maybe jada and will feel the same that they're like we're not actually doing it yes and you're like do you see how much money you yes. yeah but, okay, but you know and also just like the longevity of their relationship so yeah. many people yeah. aspire to be like them Hell, when I saw Jen and Paul, I was like, what is this? Yeah, just like, full, like, ugly crying. Yes, the first time I saw them do partner work, I was like, do they, do they have Have you seen their most recent duet? Yes, I, I, and they ugly. ain't even together no oh more. Like, I don't Matt know. Matt and I were just, like, crying the whole time like, together. Like, ugly, like, real like, ugly. I it's see... Like, I don't know that. what yeah. kind of intimacy. Jen and Paul, if you're listening, I'm trying to get you on one of these episodes anyway. Yes. But they're not even yeah. together. I don't know what they brewed during their time. But, honey, that, t that tea is sweet. That tea is Let sweet. Let me tell you. It's drip <laughs> dropping. <laughs> so before we get out of here, do you have any, like, I, I'm... I, th I think that was so many nuggets. Do you have any other things that you want to add? Oh, yes. you have to tell, you have to do the plugs. Oh, okay. Where is 
where can we see this? March 1st and 2nd uh, at mm-hmm. Gibney 280. 280 is the one on 53A Chambers. Don't be taking your tail yeah, up to 890 on. Broadway. Don't go to been Union Square. Go downtown. Yes. Um, yes, March 1st and 2nd. Uh, we are uh, Work Up 5.1. Um, we're touring with some really amazing people. You can see all of the Work Up shows. Mm-hmm. Um, the Work Up shows are really great, guys. And we'll be sharing our duet transmuting. Please. More information at GiveMeDance.org. GiveMeDance.org. Where can they find you? Because I think I know your guys' Instagram handles, but I prefer you do them. Because <laughs> I don't want to mess them up. <laughs> um, so mine is at Natty, N-A-T-T-I-E, Trogi, T-R-O-G-G-I-E. Like and mine is at Hallbart, H-O-L-B-A-R-T. <laughs> um, and we, you can also, my website is NattyTrogdon.com. And Thanks. also, shout out to Natty's website, guys. I, like, reached out to them <laughs> via the website, and they were so great about, like, getting back to me using that little form. So, like, shout out to you guys. Thank I you really appreciate it. that you said they, but really all of that work is Natty. No! <laughs> she does, like, she, she knows how to, like, do Facebook and social media and the website, and I just reshare all that she does. <laughs> so, thank you, Natty, for all of your work. <laughs> We want to give also a special shout out to Mike Brunn and Kuhu Verma who did the opening song, Much Love. Oh my God. And thanks to them, that is Mike underscore Burn, Brunn. Sorry, not <gasps> Burn, Brunn. And that is What is a Kahu? That's K U H O O. Remember that if you want to be on the conversation, reach out to me at Katie Smiles, that NYC. That's Katie because it's my name. Smile because my smile is cute. And NYC because that's where we are. And lastly, I noticed on the last episode, guys, I didn't give you my sound out. I'm so sorry. But you should make it live and you should make it breathe. But you should just make it. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks, all is bye.